In this series of videos, I plan to show how I've used uh, Syncfusion and Dapper to create a small server-side Blazor application. I mentioned I'm using Syncfusion and Dapper. So why Syncfusion? The Syncfusion controls uh, appealed to me principally because they were free. For an individual or for a business with a gross annual revenue of less than a million US dollars or fewer than five programmers, there is a community edition. Uh, there are a few hoops to jump through. They're pretty simple and then the uh, controls are free. I should also mention that their support, the community forum is pretty good. Uh, the responses are fairly fast and they normally actually come from Syncfusion employees themselves, so they know what they're they know what they're doing. They seem to acknowledge bugs when they occur and say they're going to do something about it. Why Dapper? I was trawling through uh, the internet through YouTube videos looking to learn C sharp, and I came across a series of videos by somebody called Tim Corey. I looked through a lot of his videos uh, and he seemed to be convinced that Dapper was a far better way of interfacing uh, C sharp programs with SQL, SQL Server, rather than Entity Framework. He explained Entity Framework as being something of a black box. And if something goes wrong, you really have very little control over what, what happens. I should add that I've had a little bit of experience of this, just a tiny bit, and I was left with the same helpless feeling. So that's why I'm using Dapper. But before I launch into too many details, let's have a look at the finished product. This, this is it. Uh, it consists of two menu items, countries and cities. On the countries page, we've got a Syncfusion data grid with the built-in toolbar with an ability to add, edit, or delete records. Uh, there is also a filter option here. This is the built-in uh, Syncfusion uh, filter. So let me just type in Finland. As you can see, it's fairly straightforward. And uh, clear. We can also edit and add. I won't go into those for the moment. Um, we can sort by clicking on the column headings. And there's a very nice context sensitive right click menu that allows us to copy or export to Excel or CSV files. There are more options on this. I'm just using those two. On the cities uh, page, I wanted to demonstrate a one-to-many relationship. Um, in the examples I found on the internet, I could find plenty of examples, but not very many with this one-to-many relationship. So I'm using a Syncfusion drop-down list for countries. And when you select a country, it'll then list the cities for that country and underneath it. Uh, in the bottom here, we've got the total population for the all the records for that particular com, uh, country. We've got add, edit and delete. This time they're run from uh, buttons along the bottom rather than the built in toolbar. Uh, if I select to edit a record, I can correct the spelling. I could change the population if I wanted to and save it. Uh, I can add and I can delete. This particular data grid is the same Syncfusion data grid, but I've, it's formatted slightly differently. Um, so it doesn't do paging, whereas the countries one did paging. I've limited it to 10 records. If I want to go on to see further records, I can then page through them. So that's, that's it uh, in summary. Um, we'll now get into the uh, more detail about how we can set about uh, creating this. The project requires a couple of uh, prerequisites. Visual Studio Community 2019 
in this video, I'll be using version 16.8.1, but the original project was created with an earlier version, so I don't think it matters that much which version you use. Also needed are Microsoft SQL Server 2019. I'm using Express, uh, but I think that any other version would also be fine. And to go with that, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. I'll put links to all three pieces of software in the description, and we'll assume that they're all installed and ready to go. I also recommend that you have a look at Alan Simpson's YouTube videos on Blazor and Dapper CRUD. Again, I'll put a link in the description uh, to those. They are very good, and I do recommend that you have a look at them. Once those are in place, we'll actually start the project and we'll start by laying a few foundations. Uh, we'll create the project in Visual Studio. We'll add Dapper to the project. Dapper requires Microsoft Data SQL Client, so we'll be adding that as well. We'll add SyncFusion for Blazor and then license SyncFusion. Once those are all in place, we'll then turn our attention to the SQL database and create the basic database that we need. Start Visual Studio. And we're going to create a new project. So click the Create New Project button on the right hand side. And we're going to be creating a Blazor app, so make sure it's selected here. If you can't see it, you want to make sure that that is, uh, it says Sheet. C sharp and that will restrict uh, the, the number of templates available. Click next. Give the project its name. We're calling it Blazor Countries. Uh, I'm, I'm going to leave the location and solution name as the defaults. Click create. And we want to make sure we select Blazor server app. We'll have no, authent no authentication, so leave that as it is, and uh, configure for HTTPS should be ticked. For these purposes, we'll leave that at .NET Core 3.1. Uh, if you've got a more recent version of Visual Studio, you'll see .NET 5 is available, but for this project, we'll leave it at .NET Core 3.1. Click Create to create the project. Once the project starts, uh, we want to add uh, the various uh, packages such as Dapper and uh, SyncFusion, and we're going to use uh, NuGet to install those packages. I've got the Solution Explorer on the left-hand side. You may have it in a different place, um, but we don't need to worry about that for the moment because we can go for Project, Manage NuGet Packages, and we want to a browse, and the one that we want to search for to start with is Dapper. And the top one, Dapper by Sam Saffron, is the one we want to install. So we can select that and install. That's installed. Now we want the Microsoft Data SQL Client. So it's this, this package we want, Microsoft Data SQL Client, not System Data SQL Client. So we'll install that, accept the license. And lastly, we want to install SyncFusion. We want to install SyncFusion DAP, uh, Blazor. So if we search for that, as you can see, I've searched for this before. Uh, SyncFusion Blazor, the latest stable is 18.3.048. Install that. That will probably be different. Um, 
I, I would suggest you always go with the latest version for, for Syncfusion. Accept the license. And check everything is installed by clicking in on the Install tab and delete the search. And there we've got the three packages that we, we should have installed. That's fine. The next stage is to license the Syncfusion. For that, if you go to uh, a, a browser, Syncfusion, select syncfusion.com. You'll need to create an account. Uh, I've done that already, uh, but if I go to my login here and choose my dashboard, I get downloads and keys and click uh, get license key. Here you want to select the version, that, uh, sorry, the blazer and the version that we've just downloaded. Ours was 18.3.048, so click that. Um, there's no need to enter a project name there and click get license key. Uh, a, a screen will appear which will show your license key. Copy that uh, to Notepad or somewhere like that. It'll be needed a little bit later to actually uh, license uh, Syncfusion within, within our project. Having added the three packages and obtained our Syncfusion license, there are a couple of more things we need to do. In the startup file, we need to make some changes. The first thing is we need to use add a using statement to tell it the system we're using Syncfusion Blazor. We also need to enter our registration, which will be in the uh, public void configure and to make life a little bit easier for myself I've put this in notepad first and here it's saying uh, Syncfusion licensing and where it's got your license code you want to replace that with the Syncfusion license that you've got from the Syncfusion website. And in the configure services, we want to add services dot add Syncfusion Blazor. That's it for the startup. But we also want to make some changes to the imports file, underscore imports, so that we don't have to add using Syncfusion Blazor uh, to, the, to the various pages. And lastly, in the underscore host file, we want to add a link up here so the system knows to use Bootstrap for Right, that should be it. So we'll save everything and we'll build the solution. That worked. Let's see if it runs. That's good news. The standard Blazor server side web application is showing. So that's that's great. OK, we'll stop that and the next stage will be to uh, open SQL Server Management Studio, add the database and add the tables that we need.
If you'd like the code for what we've done so far, please visit the website uh, on the link shown below. I'll also put this link in the description of the, this video. Thank you.